So um, let's uh, talk about the new legislation that's come up. Mm -hmm. Um, Pornhub has now blocked access to the site in seven states, including Utah, Mississippi, and Texas. Can you explain a little bit about that? Yes. So age verification um, is a spicy topic right now. Um, I was at XBiz in LA earlier this year, and I went to a bunch of different panels. And even if the panel had like less than nothing to do with this subject, it inevitably made its way in, I think, to like all 10 yeah. uh, that I attended. It's extremely top of mind for everybody. So basically what's happening um, all over the world, but especially in the US right now, in the US it's, um, it's a little bit different because it's happening on a state by state level. Um, there are basically copycat versions of the same really bad law <laughs> that are being um, introduced in different states and in some cases have already gone into effect, like in those states that you just mentioned where we've blocked. Um, so the reason why we decided to block in those states, it's still in compliance with the law. So I just want to be really clear with that, that when we're stopping service in those states, we're still complying because literally no one um, can access the site if they age verify or not. But basically, um, the way that these laws are currently designed is they're asking people to do age verification through a third party. Um, so essentially what you would have to do if you want to go on a porn site is provide your ID um, and get that ID approved. In some cases, you don't know what is happening with that data. Um, and only once you do that can you get into the site. So. On the surface level, a lot of people think like, oh, this is great. Like they're, you know, they're trying to, like these laws make total sense because they're trying to protect kids, right? But what we're seeing actually, there's a number of flaws in the way that these um, laws have been crafted. So for one, um, what we've seen in Louisiana, for instance, Louisiana was the first state um, a little over a year ago that we saw this type of legislation go into effect. So we decided there like, okay, we're going to comply in the way that the law is written. It was um, a little bit different there too, because they have a product that's called LA Wallet, um, which as far as we understand is kind of like widely used in the state already. Like it already has a lot of people using it. Like I think you can use it to like show ID to get into a bar or to whatever, like that kind of thing. Um, so we were thinking like, okay, this could be, maybe this could work because a lot of people already have it. But um, interestingly, we saw in fact, once the law went into effect and once we introduced um, age verification there is we saw our traffic actually dipped by 80%. So we know that that huge number of people, that 80% of people did not just stop watching porn overnight. Um, what it's doing is they're going to other sites. And what's really dangerous about that is that um, there's not really enforcement that's happening, right? So there's these huge risks, there's these huge um, not risks, but like you're you're liable for potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars if you're not complying with these laws and it racks up very quickly. Um, you're at risk of getting sued essentially if you're not introducing the the age gating. And, but a lot, most sites are just not complying because there's no one that's going after them. So we're, you know, there we, we introduced it, but we saw that the vast majority of sites are not. And unfortunately most sites um, or many other sites, I shouldn't say most sites, but a lot of other porn sites that are out there and that's hundreds of thousands, right? I don't think people understand like how vast um, that number is, do not have, you know, anywhere near sort of like the safety uh, or the trust and safety sort of stuff set up in the same way that we do. So they're not moderating content. Um, there's no like banned stuff. Like there's like, it's kind of, you know, wild west on a lot of these sites. So essentially what's happening is traffic is getting rerouted to sketchy sites um, it's putting everyone at risk. And there's also like really serious privacy um, concerns, I think there, where there's, um, you know, these products that we as providers um, are not necessarily at liberty to choose, like which ones we do and don't do business with. Like the way that it works is um, states will kind of mandate which ones they're deeming as acceptable or in some cases completely vague and we have no idea which ones we could or couldn't use. And it's kind of just like this mysterious guessing game, which is really fun. Um, and there's huge potential for data breaches, right? 
um, let alone just like the thought of someone going to like, I, I super understand like why someone going to a porn site is not like here, take my passport here, take my driver's license here, take my, you know, government issue ID. Um, and you don't really know where that data is going. And, you know, um, we also don't want really to encourage that practice of people just handing over um, sensitive information, not even just to an adult site, but just like anywhere online. Like that's just like not generally a good thing to get into the habit of doing. Um, it's so crazy because, sorry, I'm just going to interrupt yeah, for yeah, one totally. second because I'm thinking about the 22757 law and when that yeah. was enacted many years ago, mm -hmm. like back in my early days in porn mm -hmm. and people were like, so this was the, this was like an age verification process, but it was where the law insisted that producers take the personal age verification and sensitive information from performers and keep it on file like for all time in case the FBI decided to like raid your offices mm -hmm. and, and look for it, which of course we complied with and we still do to this day. And I remember my father specifically being very concerned about this because yeah. he was like, now these people have to give us their private information that we have to keep on record mm -hmm. and they have to trust that we're going to keep it in a secure place mm -hmm. and that like other people are not going to be able to access mm -hmm. it. And you're talking about like, every porn performer i mean every porn producer yeah. company in the world and what we've seen is tons of data breaches i mean performers addresses getting out there performers i mean i know i remember one friend of mine specifically like so one of the things that um we have to do are the bunny ears right where the performer holds the ids up to their face when mm -hmm. they, they take a photo mm -hmm. well there was this one company very sloppy obviously took that picture at the end of like a roll of film that they shot on them for the website, didn't edit the roll of film oh, no. and published every picture, including her with her IDs on oh, the internet. Oh my God. And shit like that has happened many times over. That's terrifying. You know? And I mean, you can't rely, look, there's like sloppy producers that have stuff in unsecured and performers have to come into the industry now. I mean, this is a lot, like yeah. there's no way around it now. Mm -hmm. There's nothing we can mm -hmm. do about it. And they have to give over sensitive private information to all kinds of people. Yeah. And there's, they have no control over what happens with that in the end. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And it's just like, I mean, this is, um, this is different because it would be, I know that with 2257s, a lot of it, um, or now I guess it's more digitized, but yeah, it's like, it, it definitely poses um, a really big concern, I think, mm -hmm. on just like a privacy level for yeah. sure. I think it's worse for users though, right? Because it's like, these are people that are not necessarily putting their face out there and entering the porn industry, right? Mm -hmm. Like performers like understand that they take a certain risk, like their name, their face is on there and stuff. Well, we saw what happened with Ashley Madison, right? Yeah. Like, perfect example yeah. <laughs> of like why that would be a very understandable concern, concern yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's something that um, we're very concerned about, obviously. And the reason why we blocked is just because, you know, we, we cannot in good faith um, participate in that way. So we're still, we're still complying, um, like I said, where by just not having access at all, there's compliance to the law. So we're not um, at risk on that front, but we just cannot encourage people um, to hand over their sensitive information yeah. to an unvetted third party. That yeah. Could... And we're absolutely in favor of the concept of age verification. Like I said, like we do think that like our platforms are, we, you know, we've gone to great lengths, I think, to make sure that our platforms are really accessible only to people over the age of 18. We are RTA compliant. Um, it's really effective when parental controls are enacted properly on devices. And that will bring me to my next point. Um, which is that we really do think there is an effective solution that exists at the device level. And that's a concept that we're more and more trying to socialize within the industry and help people understand um, that this is kind of, you know, a way that we could be um, addressing the issue of making sure that kids are not accessing all kinds of age inappropriate content, right? That's not just limited to adult, that's also dating sites. Um, it's anything to do with alcohol consumption, like violent content. Um, gaming, there's a whole number of things that really are reserved for adult audiences only. Um, so at the device level, basically the really like simplified version of it is that 
it would be like if you have um, your Apple ID, right? If you have an iPhone, there would be a step that would get introduced where you would go through the process of verifying um, your identity just once, right? You would do it. It would be part of kind of like your user ID as someone that is operating that device. And then that way it's, it's done one time. And if it's a device that's being handed to a kid, there would be no age verification that happens, right? So um, basically it would remain, it would be kind of like the way that we talk about it is that it's like the opt in or opt out, depending on how you're looking at it. So um, when you have the device, automatically it's, there's no age verification that's done, right? So only when an adult takes it and is like, okay, yeah, I do wanna you know, download a dating platform or like a dating site, or I do wanna access adult content, or I do wanna go on gaming platforms, then you would say, okay, I'm gonna go and verify myself as being an adult. And then it just kind of, it's, it's very similar, I guess, the way that you would experience, um, you know, being online on your device today, it would just kind of ungate everything. But for a kid, it would be the opposite where all these things would similarly be restricted. Mm -hmm. So it's like a much more effective solution because you're only doing it once. And it's, you know, it's um, already kind of part of human nature. Like, I don't know about you, but like my Apple ID has like all my credit cards, link to it. Mm -hmm. um, it's got like my insurance information for my car. Like we're, we're, we're used to that. Um, and we can trust, you know, obviously no system is 1000 million percent perfect, but for the most part, like we can trust that those operating systems are frequently doing security updates. They're anticipating these things. They're built for that in a way that like random kind of third party providers that are in many cases just emerging now on the market because they're seeing the opportunity they're just not built in the same way. So we, I, I don't think that personally we could hold them necessarily to the same standard.